It's pretty hard to say what constitutes good seamanship, but I figure there are three factors worthwhile looking at. One of the first things that people don't realise about boats is the way they react, depend on the very surface of the water on which they float. And as the conditions change, so does the performance, the safety factor of all boats. Now, take this little dinghy, it's, it's easy to row and it's pretty comfortable. And if it's handled correctly, it's as safe as a church. But in a breeze, in waves, and in tidal conditions, well, the whole scene changes. And the same applies to all these boats. Each one of them has got a safe limitation. And it's a wise skipper that doesn't push his boat beyond that point. So point number one, learn about the environment you're playing in. Understand and accept the limitations of the conditions that your boat was designed for. The correct weight distribution of any load is absolutely essential. I'll show you. See what I mean? Now, my weight didn't change when I stood up. All I did was move it from a position of safe trim of the boat to a position where the whole stability went haywire. Correct loading of all boats is absolutely vital to their safe performance. And it's not just a matter of total weight, but where the weight is placed and how it's distributed that really matters. So point number two for good seamanship is understanding yet another limitation. The limit factor of how much weight your boat can safely carry and then making sure that it's distributed correctly. In other words, your boat is safely trimmed. Perhaps the most important factor of all is know your own limitations. There's quite a few so-called boating experts that reckon they're ten times better than they really are. And they're the ones to be wary of. Hold on here, fellas. Ice and beer. Come on, have your drinks with the kids. Leave your car in the car park. We're only ducking out for a couple of hours, mate. You got me, mate. I'm plenty of room, plenty of beer. Oh, with about as much seamanship as a camel. There's a change due this afternoon with a two-foot chop forecast. He won't know or be interested in that little bit of information. His boat's overloaded and you can bet your socks that he hasn't got a radio or adequate safety equipment on board. And the sad thing is, there are eight other people and a couple of kids on board. Ten unsuspecting people in the hands of an idiot. Hey, 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 George. Tinny, mate. Oh, don't worry, mate. She'll be right. She'll be right, mate. But then again, she mightn't. Thanks, Tom. Are you going outside, Bob? No way, Tom. There's bad weather forecast for this afternoon, so we're just going to pot around inside. Down the southern end of the bay. Got any room for uh, one more on board? Sorry, mate, but uh, four's my limit for this little boat. What about next weekend? Hey, that'd be great. I'll give you a ring during the week. Uh, what time will you be back today? We'll be back about five. See you about seven o'clock at the club. See you later, Tom. Well, there's a bloke that's got a few clues on seamanship. He's heard the weather forecast and he's taking notice of it. He knows that outside is not the place for that little boat. He's limited his load to four people. He's told someone where he's going and what time he'll be back. What about his own limitations? Sure, he's got them, like all of us. But by taking a good, common-sense approach to his day on the water, he's protecting both his own neck and the safety of his passengers. When you think about it, it's mainly a matter of common sense, isn't it? So do yourself and your friends a favour. Give some thought to real seamanship. Safer boating, be in it too.